please let me welcome uh, Gabriel Birnbaum, who's going to talk to us about modeling plasma ph physics with neuralpds.gi. Cool. Thank you. So hi, everyone. So my name is Gabriel Birnbaum, and I'm an independent computational scientist based in San Francisco. Um, during the day, I actually work at a tech startup here called Substack. And at night, I work on like modeling differential physics, which I find quite neat as a little hobby. Um, and today I want to talk to you about how I use um, Neuro PDE to solve some plasma physics models and to build Plasma JL, which is this interface to make it easier for others to do the same. So we're going to talk about building this interface, extending Neuro PDE to these use cases, and generally working with physics, physics informed neural networks. So first let's talk about what is a plasma. Not to be confused with the blood plasma, or what we're talking about here is the superheated matter, also known as the fourth state of matter. So when something is very cold, it is in a solid state, you heat it up a bit, it becomes a liquid, you heat it up more, it becomes a gas. And when you heat up a gas to a certain point um, in really extreme temperatures, the electrons are basically ripped away from the atoms, making it an ionized gas, um, which is also called a plasma. And these gases, they're electrically conducting systems, and their behavior is pretty complex. As you can see, you know, gas models are already pretty complex to model. And once one adds electrodynamics to it, the system becomes even more um, intricate. But in any case, plasma is pretty important. It comprises over 99% of the visible universe. Stars are plasmas, nebulas are plasmas. And um, it is the active goal of um, uh, part of astrophysics and much of nuclear fusion research to predict um, the behavior and movement of plasmas. So I guess the question comes up that, how does one model plasmas? And one way to do that is through the Vlasov equation. And this Vlasov model is one of the most accurate models that we have to model plasma behavior. It's a kinetic model, and it describes the time evolution of the distribution function of a plasma. It is also one of the most complex models that we, we have in plasma physics. Um, as you can see here, are, um, a lot of math. We don't need to worry too much about um, it. Gabriel, are you are you uh, change are you uh, changing your slides there? Uh, because yeah. we cannot see the the slides changing. Oh, that is odd. Did you see okay. this change? Uh, no. Um, you see this? Ah, now now I can see it's change. Change that. Let's do it like this then. Sorry about yeah. that. Um, Okay, so we were here. What is a plasma? And now we're talking about plasma and the Vlasov equation. Sorry about that. Moving along. So basically, um, the as I was saying, the Vlasov equation describes the time evolution of the distribution function of plasmas. And it is a pretty complex model. Um, I'm not going to go into the math here per se, but as you can tell here, this is, this is pretty complicated. It is um, a, a phase space model, so it, it can be up to six dimensions plus time. Um, so uh, you need to know the position and velocity of each particle um, or um, at each point, which is you know um, a lot of dimensions. It is also a self-coupling system. So here the distribution function f um, describes um, and defines rho and j. And rho and j basically um, define the electro electric and magnetic fields E and B, and these fields then impact F. So this makes the system pretty nonlinear, um, and that is like sort of a, a really part hard ma makes the whole system fairly hard to um, model as well. And because of that, it is pretty hard to solve this numerically, and we still don't have good models for it. Um, and you know, s some other things make it harder, like the system needs to conserve um, charge and momentum and preserve positivity of the distribution function. And it's hard for the meshes um, generally to handle several characteristic speeds. So you have waves that are really fast and waves that are really slow and they're interacting together at all times. Um, and that's pretty hard to, to figure out. Um, so we thought about just doing, what about physics informed neural networks? Can we use that um, instead of meshes to, to um, solve this? And we thought that this was a good idea because the initial approach is basically like, let's give it a shot, right? Let's try this like new, new, new way of modeling things and see how far we get. And 
I think it's important to highlight, and I wonder what Chris Rakak has to say about it, is that I think this is sort of one of those good use cases for physics informed neural networks. I think they are overused, but in a case where something is high dimensional and our numeric models are not very good and surrogate models are quite attractive, um, then using um, physics informed neural networks could um, make sense. So as many of you might know, uh, NeuroPD is the package in SciML that takes care of, of solving, of, of, you know, is the solver package for neural networks in the SciML ecosystem. So I turned my attention to it um, to try to build on top of it um, and to build plasma models on top of it. Um, but there were a few problems at the time. So for one, um, the, the Vlasov equation is a heterogeneous integral differential equation with indefinite integrals. And at the time, NeuroPD did not support um, integral differential equations, nor did it support heterogeneous systems, nor, nor did it support indefinite integrals. And I still wanted to do this. So what I did is I actually just went into the code and started to like um, uh, contribute to it. Um, I mentioned this fairly um, j just because I think it's a good model to contribute to SciML this way, like trying to expand the scope of what it can do and thus like doing cool things with it. Um, and it was a lot of fun. So I you know, encourage everyone to do the same, but that's enough talking. Um, how about we talk, we go through a code example and uh, we, we just walk through it line, line by line, but I'll just basically describe it first that um, pl plasma is basically uh, an array of distribution functions and species. So you you give it um, you give a plasma you describe a plasma by saying hey I want this plasma to be electrostatic or collisionless and then you you define it by setting up the distribu initial distribution function and the initial species that species has a mass and a charge and with that knowledge we can create a full plasma model that we can then um, pass to a solver to create a, a simulation so the first line here we just call plasma and all its contents. Um, the second and third line there, we just define the temperature that's going to be used to define the Maxwellian um, uh, distribution of, uh, of the, the plasma that we're trying to model. And then in line four and five, we define species. These are predefined species that are already um, in plasma JL. So this is a deuterium ion and the other one is an electron. Um, then the lines underneath that, we then step, set a distribution object based on the Maxwellian initial distribution and the species D and the same analogously to E. What we're doing here, this Maxwellian distribution is already predefined in plasma.jl, but you can also create your own um, uh, distribution functions. We don't need to think about the geometry right now, but basically what we get at the end is that we get to define a plasma as an electrostatic plasma that takes these distributions and the geometry. And th this, this object can then be passed to the solver that can then take in any kind of, of you know, can do any kind of dimensional um, sol solve with any strategy available in your PDE, any number of layers and of newer networks. And that's all sort of like abstracted away. So you can, you can configure it if you want to, but we, we have like, reasonable and sane defaults to make it even easier to model plasmas. So let's see what this um, looks like, this example. This is a pretty boring example because it's, uh, it's a plasma in equilibrium. You, you barely see any difference um, as, as the code sort of progresses. But um, the good news, and this is not dis displayed here, is that this preserves momentum and, 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 and energy which is like a good sign of a model that is working in the plasma world. So, um, yeah. Moving along to another example, which is a little bit more um, complex, is the two stream instability, which is a common benchmark in plasma physics between codes. Like we, we check how accurate they are, how fast they are and so on. Um, and uh, we'll just walk through this once again, line by line. So once again, we call plasma and then we define the species, um, electrons. 
And now we're going to create our own um, initial distribution function called toString here. And each distribution function in Plasma JL um, returns a, a function that has that needs to have two arguments, one x and one v, for the position and the velocity of the particles. Those can be scalars or, or vectors. And basically, we create the initial condition of two stream instability. We pass that function, or we call that function here in the distribution, and we, we create an object here, um, DE, with the, the electron species, so the distribution of E. We call geometry. Let's ignore that, that for now. And then we, um, once again, call an electrostatic plasma, and then we solve it with a slightly different time span, slightly different time domain and space domain, um, which seems pretty clear. Let me know if you have questions there later. But um, this is a more interesting example, as you can see here. Let's see if we get this to run. OK, so here we start to see some more interesting behavior, but also some more problematic behavior. For one, um, there's an interesting thing here is that the neural network is capturing the behavior, but it's not capturing the initial condition very well. And you can see that slightly small here, but that the loss struggles to converge and it's basically dominated by the initial condition of the distribution function f. So that means that, um, and you can see that in the, uh, in the simulation as well, that this takes a while for it to st stabilize and form this, this like stream. Um, and these are th this is a problem that can be mitigated now that we have domain decomposition and adaptive loss, particularly adaptive loss in um, neuro PDE, thanks to Zoe McCarthy's um, pull request that was merged a couple of weeks ago. So this is definitely something that needs to be improved upon um, in the future. So let's talk about the features of the Plasma JL interface. I touched on this briefly, but basically the goal is to model any number, uh, any any plasma, so easily, right? So that means that we need to model any number of species, any number of dimensions, with any training method, with any distribution, and either electrostatic plasmas or collisionless plasmas, just like super easily. So we built the interface so that you can um, create a plasma object that takes uh, an array of distribution functions, and each distribution function has uh, an initial distribution and a species. And uh, you can pass that to a solver, which returns a plasma solution, which is an object hold, holding like all elements that you need to like um, analyze the solution that you got. And you can sort of see us, you know, you can sort of play around with this a little bit in the sense that you can create your own species or use a pre-made one, create several types of initial distributions as you can see here with the hot carrier example, which is a different um, plasma benchmark. Um, and then you can always uh, set a plasma to be collisionless or electrostatic, and then solve it in one to three dimensions, which is actually three to six dimensions plus time. Um, yeah, so just in conclusion, uh, I know I talked fast, sorry about that. Um, what was done is that we attempted to solve the Vlasov Maxwell and Vlasov Poisson um, systems with physics informed neural networks. We built support for indefinite integral differential equations and heterogeneous systems in neural PDE. We created a solver for plasmas based on neural PDE. And we open so sourced Plasma JL as an interface to easily model these plasmas with physics informed neural networks. And the future goals. Um, and basically our road to V1 is to add GPU support. These are pretty heavy models and I've been running them in Julia Hub and like the cheapest um, CPU, which is not ideal. And this needs to be fixed upstream, um, probably in the near PDE level. Um, we want to add decomposed do uh, domain decomposition for um, in to increase accuracy and to increase um, the conservation of mass and momentum and um, uh, energy. Um, in some of these models that, that I ran, um, conservation um, started to wane as the model advanced um, with time. And with the domain decomposition, we think this is going to be well mitigated. Um, we also want to use adaptive loss for some, some models that are harder to, um, th that, you know, that struggle to converge, like the one I, I, I showed earlier. 
we want to create a makey recipe for better graphing. Right now, this is a problem with Neuro PDE as well. And we need to get a little bit better at graphing. I think this needs to be solved a little bit further upstream. And then we want to add support for our surrogate models in an interface. Um, which is already possible in your PDE, and then also add batteries included um, validation. Um, so basically, I can ask, "Hey, Plasma JL, how well is my mo how good is my model?" And it can just show me the conservation laws and how well they're being um, maintained in the, in the in the simulation. So I can basically know how much I should rely on um, the model that I'm looking at. Um, Thank you. Um, you can reach out on Discord or by email or check out my GitHub. And I'm happy to answer questions now. Thanks, Gabriel. That's very nice. Um, I, uh, I'm i just picking up some questions from YouTube and Discord. Um, so the first question is, uh, what does your plot show for the two stream instability? How does this compare to a, a kinetic or PIC model? Oh yeah. So basically that one is, I'm basically, I, I get the question because I zoomed in into one stream over there. So basically you, you could zoom out and then there are two streams down there. I just wanted to show the weird behavior that you saw on, on, the, on that one stream on top, but basically it's the same. It, it's, it plots F versus V um, in zero to four domain. Um, and that's like, different from a particle and cell model because you're not actually moving a particle you're just seeing the solution to the vlasov equation in that time um and space domain all right um next question uh how does your model handle kinetic effects like landau dapnik um well the vlasov equation generally um neglects some some um landau damping um if i recall correctly it definitely some scattering is neglected there. Um, basically, it's it models every it's supposed to model everything the Vlasov equation models, and it's supposed to neglect everything that Vlasov equation neglects, right? So it's basically just plugging in the Vlasov equation and to a physics informed neural network and seeing what it does. All right. Um, next uh, is the number of particles in each species defined by the distributions you mentioned. Is that a limit? Um, and as a follow up. Is that also is that also a way to add boundary conditions or ex, uh, or external fields? Um, can you repeat the first question? Uh, the first question is the uh, is the number of particles in each species. I I, I assume that this question is specific to a slide. Um, yeah, yeah. Is it defined um, by any distributions that you mentioned, uh, or is that a limit? Yeah. So so this is a little different. So this is a particle and cell uh, method that has like a number of particles and. And what we're doing here is, is really just solving mathematics, like approximating the Vlasov equation with a neural network. So it's a bit, it's, it's something a bit different. All right. Um, I, okay. So last question, um, last question. So how, how can you do hybrid models with plasma.gl? That would be, that would be the ideal thing, I think. So I'm um, using that to develop surrogate models would be would be great so because we you have this thing in plasma physics called um gyro kinetic uh models which are pretty accurate but super expensive um and doing that with like a hybrid model with that and plasma jl will probably be probably be the way to go um uh, long term for like high accuracy it is not something that's been implemented yet and so yeah all right. Um, I think we can do one last one. Like, did you did you happen to comment on boundary conditions? Um, you know, or oh yeah, you can, you can implement your own boundary conditions as well. Okay. So that, and that, that and will then, just go into the pin. You know. Yeah. The, so you can also pick them like um, to be Dirichlet or um, Neumann as well, or you know, for for the distribution function, they can be reflective or not, um, or periodic. Um, that's all implemented in the interface. All right. Uh, you you have more questions, I think, in on YouTube as well as um, as well as Discord. So do uh, do check both those out. Um, and uh, thanks again, Gabriel. I'm just going to move on to the the next speaker real quick. Thank you.